1,000 steel workers were told this week they'd be sacked by Blue Scope Steel. And union leaders warned we had an economic crisis. We as a nation are facing a manufacturing crisis. But Reserve Bank Governor Glenn Stevens on Friday described an economy in pretty good shape, even if the world's economy looked shaky. Our terms of trade are very high, while our unemployment rate remains low. Inflation bears careful watching, but I think we can keep it under control. Joining me are Peter Reith, former Industrial Relations Minister in the Howard Government, and Paddy Crumlin, Secretary of the Maritime Union of Australia. Peter, what's this disconnect? Uh, you've got the unions in a frenzy about losses in manufacturing, but the economy is in pretty good shape, isn't it? Well, I think we are going to have more job losses, and some of that's because of the international situation, and some of that's because we're not running the economy as well as we should. And, you know, the public are not stupid. Uh, the fact is they're saving more than ever. And why are they saving? Because they can see the dark clouds on the horizon and they know it's just common sense to put a few dollars away in the event that things go sour. And it's a pity the government doesn't have the same attitude. They're just going on spending like there was no tomorrow. Paddy, what do you think? Uh, the Reserve Bank uh, putting a bit of a gloss on it. Is there a real crisis out there with, uh, that the union leaders are worried about? Oh, well, Australia is pretty well placed compared to all of the trading nations that we deal with. Um, Japan, it's an economic and political disaster. The Prime Minister stood down. Europe, the pigs, uh, the cap, you know, on debt in the Congress, US Congress. There's a massive problem and we're largely insulated from it. We've got a strong economy. We did the right things, whether, you know, Peter wants to acknowledge it or not, during the global financial crisis. We've got low unemployment and we're going OK, but we have to maintain the momentum. I think so, that's yeah, the key that's issue. That's true, but so, so why then did we have a delegation of union leaders like uh, Paul Howes and Dave Oliver and all that with, uh, with industry representatives go to a briefing of 25 Labor members and demanding things like cuts to interest rates, maybe buy Australia first policies, talking about this being the worst uh, case of, uh, worst situation for manufacturing since the Great Depression? Well, I mean, the unions are sort of playing to their own crowd. Uh, they're trying to support uh, the Labor government and, of course, their policies are completely the opposite. So, you know, you've got the MUA, for example, going back to the old days, let's face it. I mean, only this week, there they are pushing for an increase in uh, the Northwest allowance from $520, which is taxed. They rejected this week an offer of a thousand bucks without any tax, so it's a thousand plus. And we all know that if Australia is going to do better in the future and you know give itself some immunity against what may happen in the future, if you take the word of the Reserve Bank Governor, we need to have a much better productivity performance. And you know we've got the man here. I mean, right, this is Katie. sort of part of the problem. You know, tell us why it is, but Paddy, that for the last two or three years you've been boasting that the MUA is not interested in productivity. All they want is massive pay increases. Glenn Stevens did warn, did warn that productivity seemed to be slowing, and he did want, want a re, another look at the workplace laws of the Gillard government. And it's your funny old thing coming here and get beaten up by Peter Reith first thing. Have a go at this set. It looked like the devil's waiting room, and he's the receptionist. Oh you come know, on, Paddy, uh, you're getting into me right from the start. The, I mean, you're uh, out there. I mean, geez, the you're a rough customer. The reality is, you have to maintain a manufacturing base. Look at Germany. Where would Europe be without Germany and Germany's manufacturing base? This is nonsense that a country like us have to rely on digging things up to maintain long-term generational stability. Now, getting the balance right mm -hmm. is the issue. Not protectionism, getting the balance right. And if the dollar's strong, if the dollar was around about 60 to 70 cents, there wouldn't be a crisis. It's up around historically high, higher than it's ever been since the float at a dollar ten. Of course, you have to have a shock absorber and something to deal for macro and microeconomic policy to make sure that when that gets ridden through, when that cycle's over, you still have a manufacturing base that can deliver sure. jobs to places like Port Kembla. No, that's sure, Paddy, but productivity is going backwards. Uh, Glenn Stephen said it, and people are looking at your union is one of them. I mean, the, the Port Botany has now seemed to be a real problem. You haven't signed an enterprise agreement there for nearly a year that would improve We got on with productivity regardless of the bullying that went on in 98. Continuous improvement. I was misquoted by Mines and Metals. We're about continuous improvement to productivity, teamwork, cooperation, 
identifying the issues. Going forward in a mutual approach, not based on bullying, not based on thuggery, not based on the use of... <laughs> Gee, that's, 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 exactly that's a good one, Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> that's a new Doing one. Doing it in the Australian <laughs> way, Peter, well, you know, okay. where we're actually well, cooperating, okay, well, you know, you know we're here, so look, we're here what you say. models here on productivity. Look, we're here what Yours you and say. the MUAs. Well, Ours is much well, more preferable. Let's, you know, cut the rhetoric. I mean, if you take the later, latest waterline uh, figures for Port Botany, the fact is that productivity has dropped. Now, uh, it's dropped from like 29 to 27 or something. You can have a look at the figures, 10, 10 12 per cent, something I like that. I live but, on waterline. No, I mean, I, I want to make this point. I mean, obviously, it's twice as good as it was back in 1998, and that was the reforms that we introduced. Oh. But at the same time, you have to acknowledge that uh, we're seeing a softening there. I don't actually get into you over this directly because that guy, Chris Kane, he's, he just runs his own shop. You know, you are powerless there uh, in, in Sydney, and that's part of the problems in Port Botany. That's just a rogue union. But, but the problem it is just goes to show is the NUA's back around the yeah, country, well, on our wharfs as well. Yeah. And I'm just wondering uh, it's time that productivity and the uh, 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 loosening of the workplace laws imposed by Julia Gillard needs to be wound back. Oh, there's no question about that. And it's not a matter of winding it back, even if we just went back to 96. Okay. You know, that'd be a lot better. But honestly, there are other things that the government can do. I mean, I think, for example, when and if unemployment gets a lot worse, they should be thinking about, instead of wasting money like they did in the last stimulus, they ought to be thinking about abolishing payroll tax because a lot of countries don't have payroll tax. It is a disadvantage for Australian manufacturing. Now, that's something serious that they could do, actually, to help Australian jobs. Andrew, the productivity of bot has got nothing to do with labour. There were big problems in safety. There are issues with congestion. There's problem with infrastructure investment. You know, they're bringing in the third stevedore, Hutchinson. But there are problems, you know, intermediate problems based on capital productivity. But whatever There's you no say, Paddy, here. Look, look, you know, whatever, you say, whatever the reason is, and you're, you, you know, you're probably right. The, reason, no, the thing right. is, we are not making productivity gains. The Reserve Bank governor's uh, worried about it. Instead, we're talking about things like the damn carbon tax. He's more worried about capital productivity when you read through his... And mm. Labor productivity was a throwaway line from a couple of backbenchers from the Libs. That's now, and the Murdoch press has been inflated. It's about capital productivity and continuing to have a conversation, a mature right. conversation, but not a Peter Reith conversation, <laughs> a build them up personalised you know, Chris no, Kane, but, but, but seriously, Chris Paddy, Kane is Paddy, an import Paddy, body and he's a decent guy okay, and a decent unionist. But, but, but seriously, they just take and the retail sector, for example. Yeah. I mean, it's not me talking. The Productivity Commission have had a look at retail and they have pointed to the fact that there are some real problems with the labour market operation. And, look, seriously, there's a lot of jobs in that area and it re really would be, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, a dreadful situation if we lose a lot of jobs because Julia Gillard's not prepared to face that reality. That's Paddy, all. don't you think these are the sort of issues that the government should be talking about? Whatever the reason is for our fall in productivity, needing to crank up the economy again, instead of talking about something like carbon dioxide tax, doesn't that make you no. gag? Carbon tax is something that is the future, you know that. I mean, it's not an issue in the UK. Cameron went to the electorate for it. It isn't it is an, an issue in California. It. I know you're a bit of a sceptic, Andrew. Just have a deep breath. The, uh, you know, but it isn't an issue anywhere else. We're making it an issue here. When we, you know, I was at the superannuation board the other day, we had an assessment from our investment advisors, the impact on the economy is minimum. If we're talking about a genuine approach to manufacturing, why not be out there in the front of green jobs? Why not have a generational because and intelligent approach? Because it costs a Paddy. Can I go to the union credit card? In your view, Andrew. Yeah, it, well, it does. Uh, the union credit card scandal engulfing the government, this is a shocking look, is it not? Does it doesn't it amaze you, these revelations of credit cards being used to pinch $100,000 allegedly uh, from a union? We don't know the truth of that, but it is the, the allegations, don't they amaze you? It's got a pace to it, you know. Um, there will be an outcome. There will be political damage done on the way through. But in the whole remit of what goes on in politics in this country, I remember Peter with his telecard, parliamentary comrades. I wouldn't call them comrades, <laughs> parliamentary <laughs> colleagues, stacked by him yeah. and said, look, you have a right to due process. And he did that. Went Wait a through minute. it. There Wait is a, a minute. There is a right, Peter Reith, Peter there is a right to his due telecard. process to any of these things. That's Peter the Reith, only tell point me I want this. to make. Your telecard was hacked into and abused. $49,000 was racked up by other people. And yet you had to pay it. 
it was paid back. Is oh, that yeah, the no, no, I, look, I didn't know about it. The department knew about it, and yeah. I only found out about it because the bloke from Telstra rang and said, I've been trying to talk to your department about this, but you should know that there's fraud on your card. And I said, I mean, the only reason that ever came to the public light is because I said, I want an inquiry, yeah. and I want to make sure the coppers are involved, and I want to make sure that this thing is properly dealt with. You know, my worry was, was that there'd be a cover-up, that I'd be accused of a cover-up. I mean, so what I, do you I, think, I, looking at your, well, from your experience, looking uh, at this To Kate be honest Thompson with you, thing. to say there's a presumption of innocence, you know, in the court of public no, opinion, quite frankly, is a joke. And, you know, we've had, you know, many of these instances in the past, and all I can say coming out of this particular one is, I don't know whether the bloke's done the right thing or the wrong thing. Yeah, sure. I think, I, I, my advice to him is, look, honestly, don't take any notice of anybody else. You know, if anybody's telling him not to talk about it, he ought to talk about it because he himself has said there's an explanation and I think people are entitled to know and in his own interest, he needs to get that out. But the other point to be made is, look, how is it? This is, you know, you're a union member. This has been going on for you. You're a worker, <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, but look, this has been going on for years and you'd have to ask the question, how is it that Fair Work Australia still hasn't got a response to what's happened. I, I'm just pleased the coppers are looking at it because Fair Work Australia, they have been dragging their heels on this thing for years and the average union person is perfectly entitled to say, we thought they were looking after the money and making sure things were done properly and clearly they've done absolutely nothing for years. It's a process. This is still the rule of law in this country and you have to go at parliamentary level through the highest regard to process. I mean, look at the situation in the UK with the parliamentary rorting of the expenses. Conservative and Labor that ended up in jail terms for some of those parliamentarians. Yeah. There was a due process followed that just didn't mean you extinguished the government I've got to interrupt. We're running out of time. That's basis. right, Paddy. But until this became a political issue, there didn't seem to be any sign of a political pro a due process being done. But anyway, coming up... Oh, thank you, actually. <laughs> thank you, Paddy Crumlin, thank you for coming. <laughs> Peter Reith, thank you for coming. Exaggerate. For coming up. Muammar Gaddafi, Libya's crazy dictator's finally gone. So why should we be worried?